Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today I'm gonna go over some things uh, that people are making comments on. I'm gonna give you my financial opinion on um, a variety of different things. It's all uh, investment, financial related things. And I'll try to paint to the best of my ability uh, kind of the future that I might be seeing. Uh, maybe it'll transpire, maybe it won't. But uh, I'll just give you my comments. Uh, this is all getting pulled from Twitter, so I'm just going to give some comments here. Uh, one of the comments that I was reading, and I wanted to comment to everybody, it says, The 10-year note yield is now down 70 basis points in three weeks, and it's barely making headlines. And what he's saying is that the yields are dropping. Pe someone is buying in mass uh, bonds. Uh, it says, The bond markets are trading like everything is perfectly fine and inflation is set to fall to 2%. Meanwhile, commodities are trading like inflation is at 15% and rising. It's insanity. And that's what this guy is making a comment on. I wanted to make a comment on that. And what I think might happen in the future is we run into these supply shortages uh, in commodities. We have large deficits out in the future. If we run into these large deficits, I think we're going to see markets break apart from what we normally see. Uh, we could see pricing in commodities go up dramatically. We could see inflation go up dramatically. And everyone uh, is still thinking with the old paradigm that we're going to have some sort of supply response given the increased pricing in commodities. My question is this. What if commodities triple? and we see no supply response. We actually see supply go down further. There's a point in time where I think that could pot potentially come. I don't know if it's gonna come in the next five years, two years, 10 years, 20 years, I'm not exactly sure, but I think at some point uh, in my lifetime, I don't know exactly when, where the price of things go up and there is no supply response. Why is that? Why, why do they teach in, in school that price, you know, high prices cure high prices? That the supply will respond to these high prices? Well, at some point, um, if depending on which commodity it is, things are going to be determined by the scarcity of that thing. And the supply response, I think, won't fix the supply problem. The price won't fix the supply problem. No matter how high the, pr the price goes, there could be a time where supply does not go up any further than some sort of peak, and it will continue to go down and down and down. Now, maybe we find another energy source, and that will be the cure uh, to the supply problem. Maybe we don't. I don't know. But I think we're going to start to see things trade weirdly. And what I mean by weirdly is um, the system, in order for the system to survive in terms of our currencies, which is a exponential growth in debt. Now, when that hits a physical constraint in the real world, which is commodities, we could see commodities start ramping up and governments around the world start to buy their bonds to hold interest rates down. And I think that's kind of what's going to happen here. And I think it's probably already happening to some degree, perhaps. And have we hit peak inflation? You know, I, I know a lot of people say, ah, we've hit peak inflation. That's why bonds are going up. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, we could hit it for a, for a short period of time, and then it's going to intensify because all that inflation is it, inflation is just a ratio. It's a ratio between a simple ratio. It's a ratio between money supply, the M2 money supply, credit growth, and all that other stuff in relationship to uh, GDP. Now, GDP is a doctored number. A lot of these things are kind of doctored up numbers. They throw a bunch of stuff in, in GDP, uh, but it's really how much money is chasing how many goods are out there. That is inflation. That's and the way that they measure it through the consumer price index is they specifically chose certain categories 
and they manipulate it up and down to get some number that they want uh, the number to say. But the real inflation rate is what people are going to pay to live. And I would suspect that things over time, especially long periods of time, uh, are going to get more expensive, not cheaper, uh, based off declining ore grades, based off of more expensive energy. Uh, so the inputs, your PPI, are going to increase. And they're going to increase, and I don't know if they're going to come back for, uh, for however long. Uh, I don't see anything on the near-term horizon where technologies are going to drastically overcome uh, ore grade depletion. You know, it, the, the depletion of these minerals and the ore grades that are declining and the decline of um, the, the, we'll call it the oil supply. Now, perhaps it will, and we, fi we find something and technology does um, slow down the, the depletion. That doesn't necessarily mean that it fixes anything. Um, all that's going to mean is that humans populate more and that we get in a situation at some point into the future. So I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that all rolls down. I just wanted to kind of comment on that. Uh, I don't have the answer, but um, that's why I'm also set up a portfolio uh, that is physical metals, heavy, you know, physical precious metals related, uh, which protects me against, well, what I think protects me against inflation and a currency failure. And then I'm heavily in energy because I think that's the root of the problem. And the energy transition to a lower energy density and higher mineral intensity, uh, I don't think will work either. So I think that we're going to be stuck going into um, oil and other fossil fuels to fix whatever problem we get into, any whatever predicament. And uh, it highly depends how, how what the flow rates will be and what net energy there is back to society at that time. So coming back through here uh, as well, uh, it says this. It says, if you want to get better at entries, limit your buying to the ideal buy point. It doesn't have to be perfect in a bull market. In a bull market, the ideal buy is just the start of the trend. And this is the ideal buy for a trader. You basically buy on a big consolidation period and you get a breakout. Now, I have identified a lot of these big patterns and we are buying them on these breakouts and the retest. And that's what I'm doing with the finding-value.com, the platinum membership. I'm taking individual companies and identifying big patterns that are breaking out. They have good fundamentals or will be having good fundamentals uh, where they go from non-profitable to profit profitability, uh, which usually gives you the best returns. And this is exactly what I'm looking for. And also, uh, we call this the double bottom, where you get the lead-in pattern, the bottom, and then the double bottom, which is the slingshot cheetah here, comes up, it, it consolidates for a little while, uh, A and B, and then we go into a new long-term uptrend. Now, this right here is uranium. This right here is rare earth metals. It's copper. Uh, it's a, a variety of different uh, commodities are all at A and B right now. They are all at A and B. The problem that most people have is they get in at the top here because they chased, and then it, it, pulls, it pulls on back for a little while, and then they get impatient. And this is a long, big, long-term bull market that's coming ahead of us. And right here, it's telling you it's the ideal buy for an investor is where A and B is, the breakout and the retest. And we're buying it, and some people are, 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 are too impatient to hold on. That's, that's kind of their, the downfall of a lot of people. Uh, coming down, uh, this is URA versus XLE. URA is the uranium ETF. XLE is a exploration production uh, of oil. Uh, favors the change in uranium that URA is to, again, outperform XLE upon the wedge break. And I know a lot of people, I, I still think that oil is going to do incredible things at some point very soon. What this also is telling us is that I think uranium could also do some crazy stuff very soon. 
And I know a lot of people say, oh, I, oh, I want to know the exact timing, the exact moment. That Guys, you're never going to get the exact timing. You're never going to get the exact moment. You're never going to know why something goes up or down or all around. It, you're not going to know that. And, and trying to waste time and effort on that, I think, is just a big waste of time. What you need to spend your time on, in my opinion, is what are the conditions for uranium to go up? What are the conditions for oil to go up? And then watch those leading indicators. The price will lag. The price may may even deviate from what the fundamentals are doing in the short term. That is the opportunity. Being an investor is knowing that price and value diverge at some points of time. So the fundamentals can strengthen in a sector and the price goes down. And people say, well, how come that's it? How come it's not, it's not responding? Because that's how markets work. And some of them, they're going to hold them down so they can position. Big, bigger banks, bigger whatever, they need to position perhaps before it moves. They're going to price the market when they want to price the market, when they want it to go. And sometimes they need to hold it down for a while so they can accumulate for a long period of time. They can't move many trillions of dollars and buy these things in any short period of time. So they have to buy little, 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 little and get you scared so they can accumulate over a long period of time. Now, I'm not saying that's happening in uranium necessarily. I'm just saying in general, that is how markets work. And you have to be patient. You have to accumulate when they accumulate. You have to sell when they sell. So that's that's what's happening there. And uranium's looking quite good. Uh, we also have uh, Simmons Power CEO confirms the iron law of power density. Uh, power density is basically how dense the power is given a, a, a volume. So it's, it's volume, the density of power per given uh, volume. And as you go in lower and lower densities, you're going to consume more and more minerals. That's what that he's talking about there. Uh, I did add a snapshot of oil inventories and pricing of oil on the website, uh, findingvalue.com, if you want to look at that. Uh, it says, everything old is new again. It's a Ponzi scheme, but on the blockchain. <laughs> I just thought this is funny. Um, I, I, I will say this. I am highly impressed by how, how, I don't know, dedicated, I'll use the word dedicated, how dedicated Bitcoin people are to Bitcoin. I am thoroughly impressed. Uh, I talk with other people, mostly engineers. Um, we we look at the world through a, a, a utility standpoint or, or from a usability standpoint. We don't see any value, a lot of us, in any cryptos, including Bitcoin. Um, I don't know why, if the world were to get into some large constraint of commodities, why anyone would knowingly swap a Bitcoin for, I mean, I could understand swapping a Bitcoin for something of value, but why would, so, why would someone take something that's highly valuable and swap it for Bitcoin? That is where we're getting stuck uh, as engineers. Now, that, that's fine. Maybe, maybe we're just overanalyzing it. I don't know. Uh, there are some people that are very tech uh, they're very positive on technology. I, I don't think some there's a big divide in engineers on kind of the electrical engineering type are more tech driven. The mechanical aerospace type is more um, physical driven. So if someone said, what's more valuable, uh, the thing that builds the value, which would be, you know, like the commodities that go into it, which we are all highly commodity driven, uh, or the tech guys would say it's all tech, but you can't have tech without commodities. Tech does not exist without commodities. Um, a lot of things don't exist without energy and, and other inputs. And Bitcoin is a derivative of energy. Uh, it was created by energy, yes, but it also needs a bunch of energy in order for it to exist. And in an energy-constrained world, or, or where energy prices are extremely expensive, I think a lot of us just say, I don't know how Bitcoin's really going to you know, weather that. But may maybe there's some sort of improvements that they can make, uh, you know, like maybe not using it at all. That would be a great improvement. But uh, there's that. Since I keep reminding myself that U.S. commercial crude inventories were basically flat all year, supported by the SPR supply. 
It will be interesting to see if commercial crude inventory levels remain flat next year without the SPR supply. And what we're looking here, these are the commercial inventories. They're holding it up and propping it up by using the SPR drawdown. So if, if they didn't do this, this in commercial inventory would be where the SPR is, way down here. Um, so right now, people, the markets, are pricing uh, the, the commercial inventory right where it's at. It's not taking into account this drawdown. I think in the future, when we stop releasing the SPRs, you're going to see a drawdown on commercial oil inventory faster than we've ever seen before. We're already seeing it um, already. So get ready for, I mean, if China reopens at the same time, you're going to see the fastest oil spike, I think, that we've ever seen in human history, potentially. Um, I don't know for a fact if that's the case, but I th that's kind of where my mind keeps going. It's once they release, once they stop releasing, and and if China reopens at the same time, uh, we could see a super spike in oil of some sort. And I don't know where people are going to get priced out at. Uh, it's interesting because it's going to be all the richest countries basically fighting over exports of the world. Uh, it says Saudi Arabia is doing their part for OPEC+. Plus. Uh, so what this is, this is a Saudi slump. It says monthly shipments to the U.S. fall to the lowest since at least January 2017. That probably has to do with the SPR releases because they started releasing in June, and that's the exact time frame this went down. So that's uh, those are the SPR releases, and then you could see that uh, they're not sh at least exporting it here. Uh, this is silver. Uh, it says the biggest bull flag I've ever charted. You need silver in your portfolio, in my humble opinion, is what he says. A uh, decade of a bullish flag. Uh, this is a big bullish flag from the year 2000. And we're going sideways. We're ready to break to the upside for a massive uh, run in silver. Now, the question that I think everyone should have is, you know, remember, we're not just charting this. This is human behavior that's acting like this. Why is humans putting this chart up? Why is this chart putting in the biggest bull flag that we've ever seen? Why are, why, you know, what are, what's the point of this? What I think is happening is that this is ultimately pricing in scarcity of commodities. And that's my opinion there. That is an opinion. It's not a fact. That's an opinion. I also think that it's pricing in energy uh, scarcity and and potential currency problems. It's 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 all of those things wrapped together. And I think people who are wealthy are lining this up. They're buying the physical metals. They're taking it off the market. And I don't know where pricing is necessarily going to go when all the metal gets really short. And if people start to run at it and get scared, I don't know. Uh, but we'll find out. Uh, this one, it says, energy crisis is back on. It never ended. Uh, now that the storage is starting to be emptied, uh, European natural gas prices are rising rapidly. This was predictable. Misidentifying monetary phenomena can lead to an inaccurate forecast and recommendations. Really what this is, it's a flow rate. It says, static versus flow is why Europe is facing an energy crisis despite high current natural gas storage levels. The macro tourist crowd continues to get oil and gas wrong. Uh, their capacity is here, but really it's the difference between your flow rate, 120 terawatt hours versus 80 terawatt hours per month that you can put in. And this is your buffer of your uh, 240 terawatt hour inventory uh, maximum capacity. So it comes on in, but if you've got more coming out in the winter, and you're doing 120 terawatts, you've got a negative deficit if it's 80. Uh, 120 minus 80 is 40. So you've got 40. Uh, so 240, if, if you're at the max, which is highly unlikely that you're at the max, but it'd be 240 divided by 40 is six months of running those deficits, and you would be completely out. So it could get very tight if it's a cold winter, and this, this terawatt hours per month increases and you're, you're draining down your inventory. So you have a, a disparity between your outflows versus your inflows for, uh, for energy here. Uh, there's another one that says, very large, very long-term, uh, very valid pattern. we got this pattern there for uh, Hecla Mining, which, again, we're putting in massive patterns on all of these individual companies signaling that, that the humans or the herd 
are putting these gigantic patterns. Why are we putting these gigantic patterns? It's signaling something that's coming. And silver does very well in an inflationary period. Uh, same with gold. And they're all signaling the same thing. Uh, it's signaling that we're going to get looser monetary conditions coming up. That's why we're going higher in gold and silver. And it, it won't go up in a straight line. Don't get me wrong. But this is all painting a picture. And the picture... Uh, I think is painting a higher inflationary environment. Uh, so we've got multiple sectors that are painting this. It's We've got precious metals, we've got energy, we've got a whole bunch of different commodities. They're all painting these market deficits out in the future as well. So uh, when you put it all together, to me, it looks like everything is still in alignment for this to happen. Uh, and that it's going to be probably a decade or more for this to all play out and for it to be corrected. Uh, so that's kind of the big picture view, guys. If you guys like the the content, give me a thumbs up. If you um, if you want to subscribe to the channel, please subscribe. Subscribe to the website. We'd love to have you on the website. Platinum memberships, the membership I would choose, and uh, we'll catch you later. This is finding value.